Hey everybody, let's talk about estimating with finite sums. Objectives of this video, to estimate the area under curves using rectangular approximation methods. Let's jump in to see what that looks like. The guiding question is going to be how do we calculate the area under curves? Let's take for example uh, the graph of y equals x squared uh, from 0 to 3. So here is our cutoff point, x equals 3. And I want to calculate how much area is accumulated under here. So what is the value of all that area? Well, one thing we could do is we know how to calculate the area very easily using rectangles, right? Rectangles area is just base times height. So I could draw a rectangle and I could calculate the area base times height of my rectangle. But you can realize that unfortunately I got a lot of area in my rectangle that's not under the curve and that shouldn't be included in there. And so what we could do instead is we could use two partitions, two rectangles or three rectangles or four rectangles. And the more rectangles that we use, the smaller they become, the more accurate our approximation becomes. These are known as partitions, the number of rectangles we fit underneath the curve. The only problem is how do we draw them? Do we draw them from the left, from the right? And that's something we'll talk about right now. There are three different rectangular approximation methods. There's LRAM, MRAM, and RRAM. Let's take a look at LRAM first over here in the graph. So this graph right here is LRAM. LRAM stands for Left Rectangular Approximation Method. Okay, The Left Rectangular Approximation Method uses the left endpoint of each rectangle being on the curve itself. So notice each of these rectangles, the left endpoint is on the blue curve, which is still our curve x squared. Okay. Let's skip ahead to the right rectangular approximation method, which is our RRAM. RRAM. RRAM uses the right endpoint of each rectangle to be on the blue curve itself. Okay, so the right endpoint of each of the rectangles. You're going to notice each LRAM and RRAM kind of have a problem. RRAM's problem is they use too much area. Right here's here's this area here that's not supposed to be included not supposed to be included. And let's go back to LRAM for a moment. LRAM has area, unfortunately, that it left out. It has area that it should have included, but it didn't. So the most accurate rectangular approximation method is the MRAM, which stands for the midpoint rectangular approximation method. And what MRAM is designed to do is to take your two sides, so we're going to call this the left side of my rectangle and the right side of my rectangle. We're going to take those two numbers, whatever they are, and we're going to average them together, which is going to create what I'll call A for the average. The average is where you're going to draw your rectangle. So the average of L and R, the left point and the right point on the rectangle, um, are, is actually going to be on the curve itself. So then you have a little bit of missed area and a little bit too much area. The goal in MRAM is that the little bit of too much area and the missed area will kind of average out and give you a really close approximation. Notice in this example that the curve, all three times, because we're using the same curve, is increasing. The curve is increasing. So here's a tip. When you're increasing, a function is increasing, LRAM under approximates and RRAM over approximates. This is what we just saw in the picture of x squared. If you have a function that's decreasing on in your interval, LRAM will be the opposite this time. It'll be an over approximation, and RRAM will be an under approximation. Something like negative x squared. Something that decreases for that time. Let's try an example. In this example right here, it says find LRAM 6, RRAM 6, and uh, MRAM 6. Now this 6 right here, little subscript, is known as the number of partitions or specifically the number of rectangles. So if I'm asking you to calculate LRAM 6, uh, I'm asking you to use 6 rectangles, 6 partitions. The curve this time, y equals 16 minus x squared, and the interval 0 to 3. So before we begin, we have to figure out um, how are we going to fit these rectangles on the curve, right? So if I were to actually place the curve here, so I just got the, got the image drawn right here. So 16 minus x squared looks like this, has a y-intercept of 16, and it has an x-intercept of positive 4. I'm only going to use the first quadrant right now, uh, 0 to 4. So we're going to do from 0 to 3. So my cutoff is going to be 0 to 3. 
So I'll kind of stop right here. Stop. If I wanted to use, let's start with LRAM. If I wanted to use LRAM 6, okay? What that means is I need to fit six rectangles inside this figure. Um, and if I'm going from 0 to 3, I know that the width of each rectangle would be 1 half, right? Because I just simply take the, the interval, number of spaces in the interval, which is three spaces, 0 to 3 is 3, uh, and then I take divided by the number of partitions, I get a delta x, which is known as the width of the rectangle, of 1 half, okay? This is the width, width of each of the rectangles. So I could fit in six rectangles. So they will be at 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. Those would be the places that I can uh, kind of squeeze my rectangles in. Now, if I use LRAM, okay, that means the left endpoint has to be on the curve. So for example, if I were to start by doing my first rectangle, which has endpoints of 0 and 0 0.5. The left endpoint 0 is where this first rectangle is going to begin. So I'm going to put a dot right here on the curve. And I'm going to draw my rectangle all the way until I get to the point 0.5. Okay? And now this rectangle is pretty interesting. Uh, we know that the width of this rectangle is 1 half, right? The width of the rectangle is simply, we'll use a different color, we'll use a green. The width of the rectangle is simply this distance right here to here, which is 1 half. I know that because it's going to be true for every single rectangle in this particular diagram. However, I need to calculate the height of the rectangle. Well, the height of the rectangle, which I'll call h, is equal to the function value at the left endpoint. Recall that when I built this rectangle, I made sure that the left endpoint, which in this case was 0, is directly on the curve. So f of 0, f being the function 16 minus x squared, will give me the height of the rectangle. So the area of this particular rectangle, base times height, is 1 half times whatever the function value at 0 is, which I know if you plug in a 0, you just get 16. Okay? Let's do another one. So let's drop another one. This time, I'm dealing with 0 0.5 and 1 as my two endpoints. But I'm going to use the left endpoint to start the rectangle and draw a little bit of a curve right until I get to the 1 right there. I know that the, the width of this rectangle is still 1 half. The height is equal to, and we'll keep consistent with the green, the height of the rectangle is equal to the function value at the left endpoint, this time 0 0.5. And I'm going to keep this up for all of my rectangles. So I'm going to do this one goes from here to here. I'm going to do this one starts here and goes here. This one starts here and goes here. And then this one starts here and goes here. And I know that the width of each of these rectangles is 1 half. And the height is equal to the function value at each of the left endpoints. Each of the left endpoints. So we'll kind of just keep going. And uh, 2.5 is equal to the height here. What's interesting about using the left rectangular approximation method is I use the left endpoints each once. The only endpoint that I didn't actually use is the far right one, 3. I never evaluated f of 3 when finding the area of this. Okay, So let's actually compute the, the number, the numeric value. So when we're writing a rectangular approximation method uh, area, we always call it an approximate area. An approximate area, because this is definitely not equal to the area itself. So the approximate area of this curve is equal to 1 half, which is the base of all the rectangles, multiplied by, so I essentially factored that out, okay? 1 half times the sum of all the heights. So f of 0 plus f of 0 0.5 plus f of 1, plus f of 1.5, plus f of 2, almost plus f of 2.5. Whoops, and we just shot to the bottom for no reason. Okay, here we go. So um, it looks like the page thing's in the way. I'm going to scoot down a little bit. Just remember that the area of one of the rectangles would simply be base times height. The area of the second rectangle would be base times height. The area of the third rectangle would be base times height. 
And the area under the curve is just the sum of all the rectangles. So you can actually just factor out the width every time. So in order to actually calculate this, we'll use the, uh, the calculator to help us. So I know the curve is equal to 16 minus x squared. This is the curve, right? Um, and what I want to do is I want to find f of 0, 0.51, 1.5. So essentially, I want my table to start at 0 and go up by 0 0.5. And then I'm going to look at my table values and use those to help. So if I fill these in, this is going to be 1 half times f of 0 is 16 plus f of 0 0.5 is 15.75 plus f of 1 is 15 plus 1.5 is 13.75. 2 is 12, and 2.5 is 9.75. And uh, if you compute this number, this numeric value actually comes out to, I wrote down over here, 41, 41.125 square units. So this is the approximation using left rectangular approximation method, LGRAM, for uh, six partitions, six partitions of this curve. All right? So let's go ahead now and try it again uh, using MRAM. So I'm going to take my LRAM and just uh, say bye-bye. And we're going to put the picture back. Here's the picture. Let's see if we can uh, start the problem for MRAM. So we're still going to use uh, the, the six rectangles. So I know they're going to be, it's going to be 0 0.5, 1.5, and 2.5. But interestingly enough, this time when we do the problem, I'm going to determine the height of each rectangle by the midpoint of the two sides. So let's take this first one into consideration. Uh, the sides are 0 and 0 0.5. If I average 0 and 0 0.5, I get 0 0.25. We'll put that in a different color, maybe like a purple. 0 0.25, or 1 quarter. So this is where I'm going to determine the height. So I'm going to go up to my function at 0 0.25, and I'm going to draw my rectangle. So a little bit above, a little bit below. And then we just right up there. The width of the rectangle is still 1 half. We'll use a green again. The width of the rectangle is still 1 half. But the height of the rectangle this time is equal to the function value at the midpoint, which is 0 0.25. OK? Let's try another rectangle. So this next rectangle uses the sides of 0.5 and 1. The midpoint, of course, 0 0.75, or 3 quarters. Go up to the curve right at 0.75. Do a little bit above, a little bit below. Here is my second rectangle. The width is still a half. The height is equal to the function value at 0 0.75. So on and so forth. Eventually, if you properly calculate this area here, the approximate area is equal to, let's see, it comes out to 39.063 units squared, 39.063 units squared. So you go ahead and see if you can finish that up. And also do RAM. This is the MRAM. And the RAM comes out to 36.625 units squared. So see if you can calculate those two values for MRAM and RAM. One last problem to, uh, to close it up. It says, uh, you are walking along the bank of a tidal river watching the incoming tide carry a bottle upstream. You record the velocity of the flow every five minutes for an hour with the results shown in the table below. About how far upstream does the bottle travel during that hour? Find the LRAM and RRAM estimates using 12 subintervals of length 5. All right, this actually isn't too, too bad. Let's first calculate the LRAM of 12 subintervals, which essentially is going to be LRAM of 12 partitions. So this is going to equal, each of these rectangles is going to have a, uh, a width a, of five minutes, because that's the, the time frame it told me to space these things out between. So that's the width that I could factor out, right, five. And then I need to calculate each of the heights. Well, if I use LRAM of 12 subintervals, that means, and there's actually, if you count them, there's 13 entries. That means you're going to drop the rightmost value, because you need the leftmost that's your first rectangle. The height is 1. Then you move on to the next one. The left side is 1.2. Then you move on to the next one. The left side is 1.7. And so on and so forth. 
until you get to the very last value, which would be right here of 1.2. Again, you're gonna drop the rightmost value when calculating LRAM, because it uses the left side of each of the rectangles, okay? Well, if you calculate this, you're gonna get 87 as an answer. But we have to actually figure out what these units mean. Well, five was in terms of minutes. It said five minutes right here. And then each one of these was a velocity meters per second. So this 87 is actually minutes times meters per second. But the problem asked to find the the actual like how far upstream, which obviously would want a distance, right? It doesn't, this unit of minutes times meters per second isn't really a thing. So we think about how could we cancel some of these units to get just the meters? Well, I can cancel minutes and seconds in one swift motion by simply multiplying, by multiplying this number by 60 seconds per one minute. Now we know that 60 seconds in one minute is equal to one, right? This is just a simple conversion factor. And I know if I multiply this whole thing by seconds over minutes, my minutes on top cancels with the minutes on the bottom, and my seconds on top cancels with seconds on the bottom. So I'm gonna be left with an answer that's just meters. And the number, the numeric value is 5,220 meters. And that would be the answer to part A, which is the LRAM. Let's try B using RRAM, 12 partitions. The width is still five. But this time, if I use RRAM, I'm gonna start at the rightmost rectangle. I'm gonna start at the rightmost rectangle, right? And I'm gonna work my way backwards. So this is number one, number two, number three, number four, so on and so forth. So the one that I drop with RRAM is the leftmost value. So I'm gonna start at actually 1.2 plus 1.7 plus 2.0 plus dot 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 plus the very last entry of zero. And I'm gonna get an answer of 82. And again, this is in that wacky unit of minutes times meters per second. So if I multiply by 60 seconds per one minute, I'm gonna get an answer of 4,920 meters. So this is an application of using L and R RAM.